All right, welcome to today's lesson on methods, part two, where we're going to talk about queries and how to implement them into your programs. So if you recall from our previous lesson on methods, a method is a mini program that runs independently of the other methods in your code. We've used them throughout our programs to this point in time, things like draw line, length, print line, char at, all those things would be examples of methods. And we know that there are also two types of methods. Commands, which is what we focused on in our previous lesson, these perform a function without returning any values. For example, the print line method. And the second type, which is what we're going to focus on today, is called a query. And this returns a value to the program that called it. So, for example, the charat method is going to return the character at a particular location in a string. So how do you use a query? Well, in order to use a query, you have to know three things about it. First, you need to know the name of the method so that you can call it. Secondly, you have to know what parameters are required by the method so you can give the proper arguments or the data being sent to the method for it to run. And the third thing you need to know is the return type. What type of data is going to be returned from that method for you to store in a variable or use directly? This return type could be anything. It could be an integer, a string, or any object data type that you could possibly think of. An example of using a query here, so I've got a variable called number, and it's going to be set to be equal to whatever is returned by reading. In this case, it's going to tell you what the user input into the console stored in number. Here we've got the variable called initial, and it's going to be equal to the character at position zero of my name string. So again, this is going to return that character and store it into here. So again, review from the previous lesson on creating your own methods. To do this, it's called defining a method. So it's like defining a variable. I'm going to write code to make that particular method run anytime anyone else wants to call it. New methods can be defined in any program, but they must be inside the class and outside of the main method. New methods require a method signature and any actual code needed to function, which is called the body of that method. So to define a method, if you recall from before, again, you have to have a scope, which is going to tell you who can use it. This can be either private or public. Private meaning only your current program can use it. Public meaning programs outside of your current class can use it. The static keyword, which again, we'll talk about later when we get into classes, but just know for now that everything you have has to have the static keyword in it. We can also have the return type, and this is where we get different from our commands, because in the commands we knew that we had to return void, saying nothing was getting returned, and in this case we're going to have a type. So this tells us what kind of information is going to be returned in the body of our method. It could be an integer, string, array, whatever you're going to use. You have the method name, which is essentially the name of the method and what we're going to use to call the method or run it. And then we have the parameters, the data that's going to be required to be sent when you use it. So I'll show you an example here, and then you can close out the program and open up the second video, which is going to be an example program that uses this method in it. In this method, it's the exact same one that we did in the command lesson, except in this case, instead of using it as command, our doublet method is going to be a query because it's going to return the doubled value back to the main program. So the differences you see here are in the signature. This now says int instead of void. And the only other difference is, down here, instead of printing the answer, I'm going to return the answer. So every time you have a query, you must have a return statement somewhere that is reachable within this particular method that is going to return a piece of data, which must be of the same type that you've put in the method signature. Okay, that's it. That's it for today. You can check out the next video, which is about uh, an example on how to use this in an actual program. Otherwise, we'll see you in class tomorrow when we can practice what we've learned.